Well, good news. <laughs> At least for today, the snow has stopped. What I'm working on at the moment uh, is just in order to get as much of this sunlight as I can, I need to excavate very carefully. Pretty tough stuff. Uh, and shovel, shovel this uh, pile of snow here. The snow has been replaced uh, by the rain, which I will take. <laughs> now, as you can see, it's fairly bright today, and typically I get about uh, 250 watts or so out of my panels when they're all connected, but for some reason today, I'm getting barely anything. Anyway, um, I think it's time that I find a place to put the uh, water turbine, uh, especially today, given that uh, for some reason my panels aren't uh, Acquiring as much power as they typically do. So I'm going to go for a little hike and see if I can find a place that's near enough that also has enough of a descent uh, that I could take advantage of that falling water. Let's go. You know, originally, I thought, thought I could maybe just put a paddle wheel right about here. The thing is, at the moment, at the moment, uh, the stream is actually moving a lot faster than it typically does. Uh, we've had quite a bit of rain. Obviously, the snow melt is contributing to this uh, runoff right now. And so, a standard paddle wheel right here really wouldn't produce all that much power. Uh, I'd be lucky to get, uh, you know, 10 or 15 watts out of that. So what I'd like to do is take that pipe and take water from a higher elevation and hopefully dump it uh, onto the turbine, let it fall onto the turbine, um, picking up a little bit of energy from gravity as it does so. But I'm really not sure that's going to work uh, because while it is moving fairly quickly right here, um, there's really not that much descent here. And my hose diameter, or my pipe diameter, it's only an inch and a half. So right now there's no water flowing. I'm gonna have to prime this line. I can do a little bit of math and see, see what energy I could actually extract, or the potential energy that exists in that, that flow of water. Uh, and see if it's even worth my time to carry on putting my little turbine there, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Those pieces of cut tin have just been folded and then screwed onto the edge of this rim. See, I just had to fairly precisely measure uh, the distance between these screws, but everything works pretty well. The idea here is that as the water hits the turbine, it's redirected into the center or the axis of rotation. So hopefully I'm extracting as, mo as much of the energy as I can. So I'm going to use this to prime, the, uh, prime that pipe. This time I'm bringing my tripod while I work at this. <laughs> so that if I inadvertently fall into the stream again, at the very least it'll be worth some entertainment value. So I'm going to take this bucket 
coffee pot uh, and use it to prime my line here. Now, what I'm going to have to do is just flip that end around so that it's uh, facing upwards. And then I'll go to the top side and I'll just pour water in until either it starts coming out that end or it comes out this end. Well, I have a partial success here. Sorry, I've got to uh, adjust the camera so that we can take a look here. Let's see what kind of height we can bring this to. Pretty much given up uh, bothering trying to keep my feet dry. Tide. Tide is pretty high today. I tell you, uh, well, it would be chilly if I wasn't moving around quite so much, but I'm starting to get a bit of a chill now. I head back to the uh, back to the tent, do a little bit of uh, math there, just to figure out what my potential is. Nice to be uh, back in the tent. <laughs> it's getting pretty chilly out there. Um, you can see the snow still on the ground, although it's actually about plus three Celsius or so. Um, after being wet for a while though, uh, it sure is nice to come in by the fire. So I think I'm gonna make some coffee uh, and then I'll do a little bit of math. Okay, so uh, just a quick run through here. I won't spend very much time. My, uh, my water's falling two meters. Of course, there's the acceleration of gravity constant here at sea level, and I've got two and a quarter liters per second of a flow rate. That's I measured that you know relatively accurately. So just rearranging uh, one half at squared here, just off the top of my head, uh, to figure out the amount of time that the uh, the water is falling for based on its uh, based on its height, 0.64 seconds, achieving a maximum velocity at the point where it will theoretically impact my turbine at 6.27 meters per second. So. Uh, when we take the circumference of my turbine disc, 1.57 uh, meters, then we should have a, a theoretical maximum RPM with no resistance of uh, around 240. So my generator needs to be spun at around 300 RPM to achieve the voltage that I need to work with my system. So that shouldn't be an issue because if you noticed on my turbine there, it's uh, you know a cannibalized uh, old 
children's bicycle, <laughs> it has a, a gearing uh, gearing on it that I can take advantage of. So I should easily be able to make at least that and tweak it uh, for, for, you know, the appropriate amount of load that I'm going to have. I took this formula from a website called the Engineering Toolbox. I'm not sure how they derived it, but I'm just going to trust it for my purposes out here. I think it's good enough. So uh, the theoretical power is the density of the fluid times the flow uh, times the gravitational constant times the head height or the height that it's falling from. And so in my case, uh, density of water, of course, is a uh, thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Um, and we have 0 0.0025 cubic meters per second of flow. It's 2.5 liters per second of flow times 9.8 times 2. 49 watts is the maximum theoretical power available. Not, not actually what I could hope to get with my bushcraft turbine. And so I'm going to be generous uh, and say I'll half that. Uh, so I'm looking at around 25 watts of, of power that I could hope to achieve with its current, uh, you know, in that current implementation there. Well, today, I'm going to go put my water shoes on and shorts. I'll be right back. Yesterday evening I was cutting the video together and it occurred to me that it wasn't exactly clear what I was doing with that pipe and why that was important uh, with respect to the, the turbine's potential energy. In this case, the stream has a fairly good grade, but there's not really a place that takes advantage of that in one position. So the, the grade is fairly gradual over the run of the river. So what I opted to do was use the siphon effect. So but for those of you who maybe haven't played around with this or, or really didn't think about it very much, you can siphon uh, that water because as the water is pulled into this line, the act of it leaving or exiting creates a suction and draws the water out of the, the reservoir. And that works so long as you stay below the source reservoirs height or head pressure it's because of the column of water that sits just above the the inlet of this line so now if I tried to use a turbine right here the best I could get as far as head pressure under the turbine well in this case <laughs> is about an inch and a half so what I did is I used a long line and I brought it down a hill so what that lets us do by virtue of the grade of the hill, it lets us, while still using the same source of water, uh, create a greater effective velocity or a greater head pressure for the turbine. I'm allowing this, this fluid to accelerate. And because we now have uh, a greater distance to the ground, I don't have to dig a big hole, uh, and our turbine uh, can get the benefit of this accelerated water flow. So long as I stay below the, the surface of the source pool, um, this will continue to siphon. So with that said, you can see even from the small scale demonstration that uh, the orientation of the, the hose uh, matters with respect to the flow uh, and there's there's a few other factors there so I can tweak that uh, turbine quite a bit yet 
Right now, uh, with my multimeter, I'm reading about 26 watts, which is uh, yeah, right around what I figured I, I could expect to get. I haven't tweaked the line uh, or changed the orientation of the inlet or anything, so I think that uh, I could I reasonably could get about 50 watts out of that in its current configuration, you know, without without changing uh, where I place the turbine. Obviously, I could increase that by increasing the diameter of the, the hose or the pipe, uh, and uh, if I could find a place with a greater descent or a greater head pressure. Um, but you know, this is this is all to say that my solar panels, even today, uh, are right now giving me 280 watts. Uh, so, you know, the solar power is still is still better relative to my, well, my little bush build turbine anyway. It's, uh, it's Monday morning. I still haven't uh, made a fire yet, so I'm gonna do that, uh, have a little bit of breakfast and cut this video and uh, try and release it. So I think I'll leave it here. I hope you found that interesting and uh, we'll see you next time.